Hello and welcome to The Softer Side. I'm your relationship coach, Shelley Carney. This evening we'll be talking about how to have a great date. So we're going to talk a little bit about what makes a great date and I have a little bit of housekeeping to take care of first and then we're going to get into it. I'm Shelley Carney. I'm an integrative wellness and life coach and I specialize in relationship coaching. This is Toby Eunice. He's my producer and sidekick. Our normal moderators are Jimmy Fast and Jason Eunice, but since we're recording and not live tonight, uh, we don't have moderators, but if you do want to volunteer or if you have any questions or comments that you would like to keep private, please write to me at my email, thesofterside.info at gmail.com. Otherwise, go ahead and leave your comments just below the video. Take a moment now and like this video with a thumbs up, share it with your social media contacts, and after you subscribe, make sure you click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we go live or release a new video. So let's get into it. Here's a list that I've put together that are some of the major things that are important when you have a great date or you're trying to put one together. So number one is anticipation ask the lady out on a date um, and then throughout the coming week while you're waiting for the date to happen send an occasional text saying looking forward to seeing you and other nice things that you might think of it keeps that anticipation going have it be something special and not ordinary this is especially applicable to somebody who's married for many years and maybe you don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again have something a little bit special out of the ordinary um, a little bit more memorable than just doing the same thing you do every day make sure that it's well planned uh, if you're going out to a restaurant see if they take reservations and make those reservations in advance um, what else can you think about uh, that you might want to plan? Maybe you want to have some flowers. Maybe you want to make sure your car is washed and has a full gas tank. Just little things like that, that planning ahead. Conversation during the date. Um, especially, again, if you've been married for a while, maybe have something planned out that you want to talk about that's different than just talking about uh, work and the kids and the home and have something a little bit more exciting to talk about with each other. Keep a positive attitude. One of the most important things you can do to keep a date fun and light and happy is to keep a positive attitude no matter what happens. Flirting and compliments are always um, a great idea if you're in a relationship with somebody and you wanna keep that date fun and exciting. Uh, appreciation is awesome because if you offer appreciation to the lady say you look really lovely tonight and thank you so much for being here with me this evening I'm so glad that we could go out and do this that's going to prompt her to be able to say you know what thank you for looking so great yourself and for bringing me out tonight I really needed this um, so that a, a mutual appreciation is really going to add that little bit of extra fun to the date Give her a lot of attention. Make sure you've put your cell phone away. Um, not watching who else is in the room, but looking at the person that you're with and giving that person all of your attention. Ask a man who knows. So we're going to talk to Toby in just a moment, and he's going to give us some idea of some of the traditional dating courtesies, which never go out of style, and how those will work in your favor. And that'll be our next one. So let's go to full screen and we'll have our conversation. Okay. So Toby, you've been dating for many, many years. First as a teenager, then as a young man, then as a married man, then as a divorced man. Uh, and you've had lots of dis different situations not only in America, but outside of America mm -hmm. with uh, foreign people. Um, so there's other customs and 
And uh, so you've had a world of experience in dating. So what can you tell us um, about the list that I provided and throughout your experience? How does that fit? And uh, what else, what other information and experience can you tell us about with dating? So there are actually categories of dating, Mm -hmm. but I think the one that I like the best and that is part of what I would call a evolved romantic relationship Mm -hmm. um, is what I've always called the elegance date, the date of elegance. And uh, it starts with the things that you, some of the things that you mentioned in your list, and it includes planning the date, uh, because part of being good at dating is being able to plan a good date that you know is going to um, not only pleasantly surprise your uh, partner, your date, but uh, uh, one which they'll appreciate. And uh, so uh, planning, being a good planner is a respectable characteristic for a gentleman. Right, being able to put together a date like this, and then and then when I think of an elegant date, I always think about you know uh, dressing up in a suit and white shirt with French cuffs and a tie and um, you know a, a nice watch and and shine shoes and uh, showing up uh, to pick up your date uh, in l- looking really good and making sure that when you take them, you you start with just the courtesies of holding doors open uh, for them and using a valley uh, so that they don't have to walk across half a parking lot in order to get to the dinner. And then it always helps to take them to a nice restaurant at which you've made reservations. And in some cases, I have a couple of restaurants here in Albuquerque where I have tables that I can reserve. And I know the view from that table is nice or it's secluded or uh, whatever I want. And it's also nice when you can go to a restaurant where uh, the wait staff knows you and knows you not only because you're polite and respectful of the service that they provide, uh, but that you're a good tipper as well. That always helps. Um, and then it helps to know the meals that can be served. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is for uh, a new date to ask them uh, what they like, because a lot of times a, a woman will look at a new menu and be uncertain uh, of what to get, or that she'll see a couple of things. And uh, one of the things I like doing is ordering so that I know that she gets what she wants and maybe I get the dish that she also wanted. And that way I can share the dish with her. Um, Then throughout the night, I think one of the important things of a date uh, on the gentleman's part is to remain respectful and polite, not only of your date, but everyone. I think dates can appreciate it when you're not yelling at the wait staff. And even if there is a problem, it is handled in a respectful uh, way. And then uh, keep the conversation focused on her, and you do that by asking open-ended questions and allowing her the time to answer and then using follow-up questions. And occasionally, you'll get a question in return because she knows that she's been talking too much. And you can answer <laughs> it, but, but you can answer it short enough so that you can get on to uh, the next question. I think the key thing is to make it all about her because that's what your responsibility is in the date. You know, if it's if it's, uh, what do they call those dates where the the woman takes charge? uh, uh, You mean the Sadie Hawkins date? Sadie, yeah, it's a Sadie (laughs) Hawkins date where they say, I'm taking you out to dinner. Mm. That's rare, but if you're responsible for the date, then you're responsible for the date. You're responsible for the quality and the respectfulness, the mutual respect for each other and enjoying it and having it uh, be memorable. And uh, the end of the night is uh, just as important if you're not in... The kind of relationship where, you, where, where you're sharing a, a, a house or a home, then you have to be prepared to drop her off with a warm hug and not have any other expectations. Leave it up to her to make those kinds of decisions. But I think the word that describes it uh, the easiest for me is elegance. It has to be an elegant night, even if you're not driving a Rolls Royce. You know, it has to be, it's a Nissan Frontier, it should be at least a clean <laughs> Nissan Frontier. So um, so that's how I think of it. And then the last thing, I actually learned this uh, from my father. My father uh, didn't live long enough to give me dating advice, uh, but I used to hear him tell other gentlemen that he was aware of. And one time somebody asked him, you know, what not to do on a date. My dad yeah. said, uh, don't yawn and don't look at your watch, right? But with both of which are indications that you're bored. I'm gonna add a third one to that. Don't yawn, don't look at your watch and leave your cell phone in the locked glove compartment of your car. Because there is nothing that will put a crimp on a date faster (laughs) than someone who uh, pays more attention to their cell phone than they do their date. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about what 
that would be a good date for, like you said, if you were in a romantic relationship with somebody. What if you met... Or, or, or if you were married to that individual and you were waiting for that, you know, night without the kids, date night, you know, that you can have mm-hmm. uh, every once in a while. It, it should be it should be just as memorable. Uh, and, and maybe make a point, as you go on in life, it's later, as you go on later in life in your relationships, it's harder to have conversations. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important that you have activities that are not dates but that you can do together whether it's uh, you know golfing or fishing or playing tennis you should have these activities that you do together so that that can be incorporated into the conversation and you don't have a date that starts with how was your day and ends with uh and and we need to get billy into a new school because he's not happy right (laughs) that's not a date that that you can that conversation you can have at home so you've got to have some common interests or at least interest that the other person, you know, I never expect someone to be as fascinated with going out to the shooting range and doing target practice as I am. But uh, part of the courtesy of that is taking an interest in it in the same way that I may not be as interested into feng shui, right? <laughs> uh, designing the house with feng shui, but that doesn't mean I can't ask the conversations, about it, ask questions about it to learn more about it from them. So I, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. I'm oh, right. going to ask another question. I was going to ask, uh, say you met somebody in online, uh, in either through an app or a, uh, a service online, and you've gotten to know each other just a little bit, and you're going to have your first date. What would you recommend in that situation? Hmm. So uh, a couple of things. Number one, it wouldn't be the kind of date where I picked up the date. I'd likely meet them someplace that was comfortable for bo- both of us. And I think I'd revert to a casual elegance, right? Rather than a suit and tie, uh, I might be more casually dressed, but still elegant, clean, you know, shaven, hair, uh, you know, brushed back, showered, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> and I'd meet in a place that I would have known by that time was comfortable for them, even if it happened to be a coffee shop. Right. Do you want to meet at Starbucks or do you want to meet for a light lunch at, you know, your choice? Where 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 would you like to uh, have this first date? And um, I would recommend that we go in separate vehicles so that if either of you weren't particularly happy with the date, you could leave. And I think that's what a mature person does when they can say, you know, uh, you're you're a different so different to political bent than I am. I don't think this is going to work out, right? But that kind of honesty is always good for an individual because they're probably feeling it too. Uh, So I would say maintain a casual elegance rather than a formal elegance. Lots of conversation. That means asking questions to find out more about the person. And sometimes just asking the questions will tell them more about you. And uh, so I think that's important. The conversation is really important. And also it has to be stress-free, right? There isn't the stress of, oh, I have to perform or I have to make sure that she's happy this first time or or she has to make sure you're happy. Nice, casual conversation, kind of a point between uh, both, you know, if you live in Rio Rancho and I live in Albuquerque, let's meet at Cottonwood Mall or something like that in the Cottonwood Mall area. and then everybody, each of them go in there. Each of you go in their own vehicles, and then you can make a decision about whether there's going to be a second date. And it still might be casual. There might be three or four casual dates before you get into the more formal and even romantic ones. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that gives you the opportunity to find out about an individual. Okay. Um, so you mentioned for a married couples that they should have their own interests or interests that they come together in to have something additional to talk about over uh say a meal or something um i know that with my husband and i we that's something that we sometimes struggle with is is having a topic of conversation that's not uh, the kids not the house not you know something that that's uh family related something outside of ourselves Mm -hmm. um to talk about uh, besides work, you know, um, we struggle to find a topic like that. So what would you recommend? So uh, the first thing is that as a, a relationship ages, uh, eventually just having that elegant date on a regular basis isn't enough to keep the re- relationship uh, what I'd call interactive, right? And so you have to develop uh, one of the one of the nice things about dates is you can find out enough about the person that let's say, as a child, they went hiking. Their, their favorite uh, thing to do with their family was to go hiking, and that had never come up as a topic. 
uh, or uh, one of the things I found out about my wife was that she and her family used to love road travel. And my idea of travel was you got in a plane, you rented a car, and you stayed in a hotel. Mm -hmm. And their idea was you drove and you popped up a camper, mm. you know. And I had I, well, I had never heard that story. And so I changed that. I changed my perspective on it so that once a year we'd, we'd do my kind of travel, but once or twice a year we would do that kind of travel. And so now we had that in common. And then we, we could, as we had our other dates and looked, looked for conversation, we could plan those kinds of uh, trips rather than talking about the kids and work and things like that. So I think one of the important things that you have to do is recognize what may interest your partner and find out what you can do about building commonality you know you might find that your partner likes playing tennis and you never thought of playing tennis well take some lessons or they 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 you know you spend uh, a week uh, or four hours a week playing golf with your friends instead of saying do you want to take golf lessons that we can play together so I think as the relationship uh, uh, develops it becomes progressively more important not only to allow them the space to develop their own um, interests, but for you to develop common interests so you, that you do have a conversation. If you've ever heard two people, I had a, I had a, a couple of friends uh, who were, uh, he was an avid golfer and she, we, they would come to the parties and he would talk about golf and she would talk about how much she hated golf and how much time <laughs> it took it away from him, you know? Mm -hmm. That's how it was. And then he finally one day asked her, would you like to take golf lessons? I could use a refresher. They took a course together and they became uh, avid golfers together. And instead of him going with his friends and her staying home and complaining to her friends, they started golfing together. They got to be healthier. Although golf, I don't, I'm not sure that golf necessarily is, but it gets you out in the sunshine and fresh air. And you're together and you're talking about your golf game. And when you go after that for cocktails or whatever, you can talk about how good you were, or how good they were, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's important as the relationship develops to look for those opportunities for common interests even if it might be something that you never indicated any interest uh, before, you know, and now you do have it, and now you have something more to talk about besides kids and work. So All don't right. don't don't get boring. <laughs> well, it's it's hard not to. Yeah, yeah, it's hard not to because it's easy to just talk about kids and work and sure. you say, well, that's all there is. Well, you know as well as I do, eventually, although you may not be an empty nester, the kids are on their own. I mean, there's almost not, not enough to talk about with the kids. And you know what your husband does and he knows what you do. So you better go look for, I'm, I'm not giving you <laughs> advice here, I'm, I'm saying, if you're in that situation, what I would do is go look for an area of common interest, something that you can do together, whether it's hiking, fishing, treasure hunting, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. so that you can have different things to talk about besides ha work, house, and the kids. Because you don't have to do that. I, w I wouldn't waste the date on what needs to be fixed at the house. <laughs> well, sometimes you need that calm, relaxed yeah, atmosphere just to, be able to have, just conversation, to have yeah. conversations like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... All right. Well, I think that's uh, covers a lot of territory, the dating we? part of it. Anything else I would ask would be before or after. So I think we're ready to move on to our okay. last slides. And uh, here are my recommendations. Watch my videos, Her Romantic Hero, which uh, talks a little bit about how to be a romantic hero to the lady in your life. And the man's job responsibilities during the date and this is covering the uh, sentient dating techniques which are um, based on sentient sales techniques so it's a uh, pretty interesting and uh, it'll also help you with your sales job so <laughs> take a look at that video yeah. as well I have a transformation group coming up it starts the first Friday in September and it goes through the whole month of September if you're interested in learning more about that transformation group and what it can do for you uh, take a look at my website at the softer side.info and that's also in the description box below I'm also available for additional coaching as needed if uh, that's something that you're looking for I have a free ebook available. It's at the link listed there. It's also in the description box below. The Secret of Letting Go and Starting Fresh helps you with uh, letting go of your past relationships and opening yourself up to a whole 
new kind of relationship with a clean slate. And once you've signed up for the ebook, you continue to get um, additional tips, tools, and techniques by email from the softer side. Next week, we will be live again on Thursday, August 30th at 7 o'clock p.m. I hope that you will join us. And if you have any questions or topics you would like to see discussed on the softer side, send those questions to thesofterside.info at gmail.com. Again, that's also in the description box below. Well, thank you all so much for being here this evening. And again, we'll be back live next week. Um, Toby and I are both on vacation having a wonderful time and we're so glad that you're checking out our video this week. And for the softer side, I'm your relationship coach, Shelley Carney. <laughs>